Welcome! This plant here is Huernia thuretii. It is very closely related to the two plants that I have shown you a few days ago, to Huernia zebrina and Stapelia situla. It belongs to the same group of plants, which are called Stapeliads, which are pollinated by flies. All those plants from this group, from the Stapeliads group, are mimicking the way a dead carcass would look on a desert and would attract the flies to sit on them and to lay eggs and pollinate the flowers while they are doing it. This flower here is not as big and as, is not as conspicuous as the flower of Hewernia zebrina, but the stems look almost identical. It is not really possible to tell them apart, Hwernia zebrina and Hwernia thuretii, when they are not in bloom. Hwernia thuretii's stems are leaning a little bit towards the greyish side of the color and Huernia zebrinas are more brownish. But it is so vague that one can easily mistake one for the other when they are not in bloom. Stapeliads are very difficult plants to keep alive. They are very unpredictable. One may have a plant for many years and then from and then within a moment of few days without showing any signs of distress you might realize that the plant is dying. And that was exactly the case with the mother plant Huernia thuretii of this little one. I rooted the stem just in case. Last fall it is growing really nicely. It has two, it produced two stems already and it produced a flower as you can see. But I will make sure to detach one section and root it in a different pot to have it as a backup plant if and when this one decides to give up. As you can see the flower is quite small and its colors are leaning towards yellow. It's much lighter than the other two stapeliads that I showed you before. I keep this plant inside during winter time and during the time when it's too cold for this plant to be outside. For the very hot summer months I keep it outside on my deck in a spot that is not very very brightly lit, that is not totally exposed to the full sun but I take it back home quite early because uh, this plant doesn't like to be in the cold. This plant likes warm temperatures all year. I cannot keep it dry in the winter time either. It is possible to kill it by not watering it enough. So it requires regular watering in winter as well, except not as often as during summertime, maybe once every two, three weeks. I hope you can appreciate the beauty of this plant. It is maybe not the most spectacular flower, but it certainly is very interesting 
and just like all plants, just like all flowers, it shows the perfection of nature. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.